This is our seventh podcast on uh, chemical bonding. Yes. And today we're, we're getting towards the end. We want to talk about molecular polarity. Okay. There's a lot of times some confusion between molecular polarity and a bond, bond polarity. polarity. Yep. And that's very hard to understand. So the, be, be, be a pay close attention so that you understand bond versus molecular polarity. Right. So you can't do molecular polarity without bond polarity. But don't confuse the two. Right. So as we talk about molecular polarity, let's just do a little review. Molecular pol or polarity is a separation of charge. That means that one side of something has a one charge, a positive charge over here, and another side has a negative charge. So that's polarity. It's like a little magnet. Think of, yes, think of it like a little magnet, okay? So here is kind of the way to understand this. Think of polarity as a big topic. There is both bond polarity and molecular. Now, what does that mean, molecular? A uh, polarity of an entire molecule. Yeah, so like uh, if we take our example here of um, this doggy toy right here, this is a mole molecule with several bonds. It has four bonds, each bond having polarity or not, and the whole molecule does it have polarity or not. Or not. Now, the bond, the only way you can determine whether the bond is polar or not is by the electronegativity difference, which we learned about in a previous podcast. Right. And for a molecule, it depends on two things, both the electronegativity, so the stuff that's over here, but number two, also the shape. shape. That's very important. So it's a combination of two things that we've learned before. So to help us understand this, I have an analogy, Mr. Sanders. Oh, already. This is, uh, for those of you who are in foot, into football, and, you know, I, like, won the fantasy football championship nah, at Woodland Park High School last year. I haven't year. watched a professional football game in over 12 years. Wow. Yeah, well, anyways, this guy's, uh, actually, he got in a lot of trouble because he was mean to some women. Uh, but his name is Ben Rothensberger, all right? Uh, he plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think he's on suspension this year because of bad things he did with a woman. Okay, but Ben, <laughs> maybe that's not the best picture. Uh, so Ben, uh, he plays in the NFL. Okay. If you play in the NFL, I'm going to contend that you need two characteristics. Okay. Number one, you need to be big. Okay. And number two, you need to be fast. Okay. Now, if you're really, really fast, I, I, I went to college with this guy, Isa Tauni from uh, Ghana, West Africa. He was about 115 pounds, but he was the fastest man I think I've ever met. Wow. But if he went out and played in the NFL, he'd get crushed. He would be totally crushed. 115 pounds, yeah, right. be, it would be ugly. Um, Big. Big. If you're really, really big, can you play in the NFL? If you're just really, really big. Just big? Probably not. Yeah, you ever like watch The Biggest Losers? Some of those guys I'm doubting are going to make it in the NFL just because they're, they're not particularly fast. Okay. They're big but not fast. I think you need to be both big and, and fast, fast. Okay. to play in the NFL. All right. So when I say this, um, we go back to this chart, you must have an electronegative bond and you must have a shape that does not cancel out. Okay, so two two qualities. Two is what qualities. We're looking at. So here here's what I says: the polar uh, molecule must have a bond that is polar. The electronegativity the electronegativity difference is greater than point. Should it be point five? Point five, I think. Point yeah. five. It's yeah. kind I've of seen that range. Written either way. Point five, and it must have a shape that does not cancel out. Okay. All right, and this we say that where there's a geometric center of positive and negative charge. You'll see that in an yeah, example well, in just a minute. Okay, and you use the shape paper. Now, if you okay. look at the shape paper, let me just give you a couple of hints. On the shape paper, I put the words usually, usually nonpolar. Usually. usually polar. Usually nonpolar. Usually nonpolar. Usually polar. Usually polar. But the word usually does not mean always. That is correct. Be careful. Be careful. All right, so let's do some examples. Let's do All a right. classic example. Water is a classic example. Okay. Now, to do this, you do have to draw the Lewis dot structure. And I will draw the Lewis dot structure of a cup of water. And I'm going to make some shapes. All right, so water has this particular shape. Now, the shape, by the way, I'm not going to go into this. You could figure it out from the shape paper. This is bent 104.5 degrees. There are four um, uh, regions or four things, mm -hmm. and uh, two are unbonded. Now, is the bond polar or not polar? So to do that, I would go back and I would look at this table, table of electronegativities, mm -hmm. oxygen 3.4, Hydrogen 2.2. So this is 3.4 and this is 2.2. That's the difference of 1. Is 2. 2. So the difference is um, 1.2. Now remember that means to be, is that greater than 0.5? It is. So the bond is polar. Okay, so we've got one of the two criteria. We have a polar bond in this molecule. And the second thing we must check out is the shape. So if we look at the shape paper, you would see that it says 
right here that it is usually polar. polar. And it, the reason it's usually polar, I should just that's tell you. That's actually the wrong one, but that's okay. I should have circled the wrong one. Yep. It's usually polar because essentially what's going to happen is the one that's got the higher number gets the ever so slightly negative charge. Mm -hmm. And then the hydrogen is slightly positive and slightly positive. And you sort of ask the question, where's the center of negative charge? Well, that would be right on the oxygen atom. Where's the center of positive charge? Geometrically speaking, it would be right here. Well, guess what? Those are not in the same place. Right. So you have a little magnet right here. Therefore, that makes it polar. Polar. Okay. Okay. Let's do another example that right. we've seen before. Hey, look. We, um, b by the way, guys, all the examples we're going to do here are all the ones you saw in the previous lesson. So you can even just go back to your notes and add to your notes. So you don't have to recopy everything down again. All right. So for this one, carbon is 2.6. Hydrogen is 2.2. So this is 2.6 and this is 2.2. That's a difference of 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is the difference. So that's the bond. Not, that's a nonpolar bond. Guess what? Those are all nonpolar bonds. So since they're all nonpolar bonds, you can't have. This, this guy's not big. Right. Playing the NFL, he's not big. Right. He might be fast, but right. you know what? Actually, he's, not, he's big and not fast, actually. Right. While we're at that, let's ask the fast question. Okay. Let's look at the shape question. So in the shape, since the shape is tetrahedral, that is a canceling shape. Right. Look on your shape sheet, and it says that the tetrahedrals are usually all And the reason that is, folks, is each of these are 2.2. .2. So these are the positive ends down here. Each mm -hmm. hydrogen is slightly positive. And if you ask yourself, where's the geometric center of positive charge? Right it's in the, in the middle of the carbon. And this is the 2.6. Where's the geometric center in the, the negative? And positive and negative, same place, so they cancel. Yep. All right. OK. All right, this next one, NF3, this is a pyramidal shape. So let's check our bonds. So uh, fluorine, I happen to know, is 4.0. Am I right? How do you know that? I just do. Wow. And then uh, fluorine, it, no, yeah, fluorine nitrogen is, is, three. is 3. So this is 3.0. So the difference is 1.0. That classifies as a polar bond. So it's a polar bond. So, so the bond. Check. Check. Now let's see if he's also fast, if you will. OK, so let's shape. Let's see the shape. So if you look at the shape paper and pyramidal, it says it's usually polar. And again, the reason is is that the slightly negative charge now is on the fluorine because he has the higher number. And the center of negative charge is down here. And the center of positive charge is on the nitrogen. Guess what? We have a magnet. So shape. So this is polar. Yeah. No, I probably didn't say this or write this down, but you realize this is nonpolar. Since they cancel out, that one's nonpolar. And then the water. Was it, was it the previous one? Yeah. This is polar. Probably should just write that down. Yeah, we should. All right. All right. Uh, next, not, we will. Okay. All right. This 